between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. Now, God is telling us here that the six days of creation and then the seventh day of rest, and which, by the way, we still have exactly seven days in the week. And you know, did you know there's been people that try to change it? And, and nobody's ever been able to successfully change it. That's because it was made that way by God and it will always be that way so long as the earth exists. And so God is saying here that I created the universe in six days and I rested on the seventh and that's going to be a perpetual covenant. It's a sign to you so that you'll know that when I say something, I never break my promise to you. So I want you to start thinking in terms of maybe, just maybe, the miracle working God, the God that I want to change my life, maybe, just maybe, He really did create the universe and everything that is in six days and rested on the seventh. Now, uh, let's look at another place here. Genesis chapter 1 verse 5. Because some people say, some people say, well, okay, yeah, I believe that God created everything, but you know the scientists, you know, they have carbon-14 dating, which we're not going to talk about, but it's really not as reliable as they make it sound out to be. Uh, they say it's uh, 15 billion years old. Maybe, maybe um, in the Genesis story, maybe a day, like the day of creation, maybe it doesn't really mean a day. Maybe it means like, you know, let's say uh, 4 billion years. Let's say that a day equals 4 billion years and that over these days, everything evolved to way it is now. Well, it seemed like God has an answer to that one too because God said in Genesis chapter 1 verse 5, God called the light day and the darkness he called night and the evening and the morning were the first day. Now, it just looks like to me here that on day one God created light and darkness and he separated them. So here we have the very first occurrence of the word day. And the Bible is spelling out to you exactly that the day means an evening and a morning. In other words, the full circle of what day is from one day going into the next, the evening and the morning, were the first day. Literally, literally, a span of not four billion years, but a span of... 24 hours. The way you and I see a day, that's how he was referring to a day. And let me let me just kind of help you out with something else too. Just because they're scientists, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're smart. See, science is always having to adjust its ideas and its hypothesis and its theories and evolution to them is a theory. It's a, it's a non-proven fact. And the reason why they can't prove it is that none of them were around, you know, 14 million years ago when they say Neanderthal man walked to the earth and 65 million years ago when they say the dinosaurs became extinct. They weren't around, so it's just a theory. Not everybody that's a scientist is right. And there is what's called false science. Um... You know all this stuff, how they tell you on the news that if you eat such and such, it's kill you, it's got cancer in it, it'll kill you, and all of this stuff. I don't know if you know this or not, but some scientists get paid pretty well to come up with their little ideas and theories. You know, just telling you. The scientists of this world are not these um, very pious um, people that have no agenda other than scientists. These people have an agenda. And the Apostle Paul warned us about them. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 20, he said, he said, O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust. He's talking about the Bible. Avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science falsely so called. He told Timothy, Timothy was to be a pastor of a church. And he said, Timothy, hold fast that which you've, that I've committed to you, meaning the Bible. And he said, you avoid the oppositions of science falsely so. So the word science comes from a Latin word which means knowledge. And he said, it's, it's, they call themselves knowledgeable, but they're not really because they are in opposition to what will save you and lead you to eternal life, and that is the Holy Bible. So, let's just say that maybe the scientists are wrong 
And they're not telling you the right thing. Romans chapter 1 verse 22, the Bible says, Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and to four-footed beasts and creeping things. So, Paul is telling us in the book of Romans that the wise, smart people, you know, the doctors and the biologists and the geologists and the evolutionary scientists, they, they're trying to tell you that they're smart. They profess themselves to be wise, but they became fools because they changed the glory, the glory of the incorruptible God, which Romans says the glory of God can be seen in his creation. But they've taken that glory and they've made it into the image of man. They're saying, they're saying that, that man and the four-footed beast and the little flowers and the trees and the butterflies, they're saying that through evolution they created themselves. That's changing the glory of God into the glory of man. By the way, we're living in a time right now... There's an idea out there called transhumanism that basically says that man has gotten so good with science that rather than us waiting for evolution to happen, we're going to change ourselves into gods. That's exactly what Paul was warning about in the book of Romans. And that's exactly what Lucifer promised Eve in the Garden of Eden when he said, Ye shall be as gods. So maybe evolution has an agenda that will lead us away from God rather than to God. But the evolutionary scientists estimate that the universe is about 15 billion years old. They say that the universe is billions and billions of years old and that life spontaneously arose from non-living material. In other words, there was absolutely nothing. And here they, they give this scenario. There was absolutely nothing. There was this pool of goo and inside this pool of goo there was all these chemicals and lightning struck and the temperature was just right and then all of a sudden out of absolutely nothing life formed itself the first cell was formed that's that's what they want you to believe now a cell is not just this glob of nothing that doesn't mean anything a cell has working living parts in it it has parts that bring in things that it feeds on and converts it to sugar and then converts it to energy the cell also has a way of getting rid of waste the cell also has a mechanism that once it's in place it reproduces itself it divides and reproduces Produces itself in a perfect fashion. What they're telling you, what what, and all of these parts of a cell have to exist and work perfectly, or the cell dies and it won't live. And what what they're telling you is, is that instantaneously, every working part of a simple cell came into being by itself. And then reproduced itself. That's what they're trying to tell you when they tell you they believe in evolution. It doesn't make sense. They also say that with evolution, you have, you know, let's say, let's take this cell. Let's say that it did happen. Okay? Let's say, believe me, it's, it takes more faith to believe in evolution than it does to believe the written word of God. Okay? Uh, and by the way, the evolution, evolutionary scientists will not help you with your drug addiction. It won't help you with your alcohol addiction. It won't, they won't help you with the problems that you have in your life. Just saying, but the word of God will. Anyway, um, so there's, let's say that the cell, let's say it did, you know, what they say it did. And then it began to reproduce. And so now in this pool of goo, you have uh, 15 billion cells. Now, all, all, all of the science that scientists have been able to look at for, the, let's say, the last hundred years, um, every mutation in a cell, every little change that has taken place in a cell, consistently now for hundred, maybe even hundreds of years, that scientists have been looking, every mutation in a cell has always been to degrade a species rather than improve it. But evolution says that the mutations in the DNA of the particular cell is what made the species 